I'm Ian Harford and today we're going to have a look at the equipment that I use for pheasant shooting. Uh, now of course I know everybody is different and everybody has their own preferences uh, but this is just the equipment that I've used over the past few years and it's a system that works for me. Uh, but of course one man's meat is another man's poison and I fully understand that all of you have your own personal choices. But this is what I use. So uh, first things first, uh, guns. Uh, you can't go on a pheasant shoot unless you have a gun uh, and the two that I use are these. It's my AYA number one deluxe, it's a pair in 12 bore. Uh, now, even though most of the days I do are single gun days, I'll still take both guns with me. Firstly, for the unthinkable, if it was to happen that I maybe broke a firing pin or something, I've got a spare gun. Uh, but there's also from time to time, uh, you go on a shoot and somebody hasn't brought a gun with them or is new to shooting, and they may need to borrow a gun. Uh, so it's always good to have two. Also, I like to spread the wear between guns. So on one day I'll shoot number one, and then on the other day I'll shoot number two. And it just means that the, the wear is consistent and also they develop the same patina. Look a little bit strange in the cabinet if number one gun was all worn out and then number two gun uh, was nice and shiny. So getting on really well with them. They are a side by side, so they're a slightly different style of shooting uh, to over and unders. I shot over and under for a long period of time before coming to side by sides. They're a lot more lightweight, they're a lot more manoeuvrable, but you have to be uh, a lot more focused and concentrated on the bird. There's less room for manoeuvre uh, with a side-by-side, -side, so I really enjoy those. In terms of ammunition, I will always take my cartridge bag, this one here, uh, which is fallow skin. Uh, it holds 75 cartridges, so I'll typically take between 50 and 60 cartridges to a drive, which is enough for me. I tend to shoot 150 uh, to 250 bird days, so uh, if you're shooting more than 50, 60 cartridges, uh, you're probably shooting more than your fair share on those. Of course, if you shoot a bigger day, a uh, 300, 400 bird day, then of course you'll need to take more cartridges with you. Back at the truck, I'll always have uh, my magazine. Uh, this is a leather magazine, holds 225 shells. As you can see, I shoot Imperial Game from Hull Cartridge. Uh, typically, I'll shoot 30 gram uh, fives, although for partridge earlier on in the season, uh, I might shoot a 30 gram six or 28 gram six. And for higher birds, I'll shoot a 28 gram four. Slightly smaller load in terms of weight, a little bit faster, but those number four size pellets, uh, they have a lot more kinetic energy uh, when they reach the target. Um, and of course, for high birds, you want to be uh, shooting them with as much power uh, as you can. Uh, then it comes down to cases. Uh, I have two different cases that I use. Uh, this is my uh, motor case from Ray Pavon. It's a beautiful uh, handcrafted uh, wooden and leather case which allows me to break down my guns, uh, put them into this nice uh, sturdy case. This is quite helpful if I'm going away and I need to keep the guns with me at all times. Uh, it's a lot less unwieldy than a pair of gun slips. Uh, it's also good for traveling and if I'm going on a flight. Um, but typically I'll use my, my gun slips. And I have a pair here also from Ray Pavon which have been made specifically uh, for this pair of guns. And as you can see they're strapped together so if you're shooting a double gun day uh, you can carry both to the peg at the same time. If I'm not shooting a double gun day I'll take both guns in these slips, leave them in the truck and then take a single slip with me. Uh, but always handy to, to, to have these. Uh, now these are still pretty new um, but over the years they'll develop their own patina and they'll match the rest of my leather wear. So that there is a shooting equipment. Now in addition to that I have this which is my walking stick, a very important part of the day. I spend a lot of time talking uh, and leaning on it, which is one thing, but I also have a system when I get to my peg uh, that this is a very important part of. As I walk up to my peg, I'll bury the stick in the ground, uh, open my cartridge bag, fill my pockets, put the cartridge bag on the ground, open the slip, remove the gun, and I'll hang the slip on this stick. It saves it from lying around in the mud and, and in the wet on the ground. Uh, of course, a lot of the equipment we have here looks better as it ages, uh, but there's also that balance of uh, having the right care and attention. Uh, all of this equipment here, certainly the cartridge bag and the magazine, I've shot with for over 15 years. Um, so while they look worn, they're still in pretty good condition. So the stick not only helps me uh, keep myself steady throughout the day, but also looks after my equipment uh, when I get to my peg. So there's my shooting equipment. Next up uh, is me. And they say that clothing maketh the man, and I think when it comes to pheasant shooting, that's exactly right. Uh, I'm a tweed guy. Um, I think that dressing appropriately and showing effort when you go to a shoot shows respect. Uh, respect for your quarry, uh, respect for your fellow guns, respect for the venue and respect for the sport itself. Uh, even though you may have paid for the day or been invited, a huge amount of work goes in behind the scenes to make the day work, to deliver you uh, the day sport that you're looking for. Uh, I always wear a shirt and tie. Uh, typically I wear breeks, uh, tweed breeks, uh, socks, 
um, and a waistcoat and, and of course a field coat which we'll come on to in a second. Not only do I feel part of the day but I think it also uh, shows to the shoot that you're ready, uh, that you're experienced and that they can trust you to make the right decision when it comes to birds. So clothing is very, very important. Now I am a tweed guy um, and I have a few uh, tailored custom suits uh, but as I get a little bit closer to Christmas, they all get a little bit tighter um, and they're not quite so flexible. So I've actually started to move into off-the-peg uh, shooting suits. Now, uh, they make some very good uh, off-the-peg tweed suits nowadays. Uh, this one from Deer Hunter is a Deer Hunter Woodland, lovely modern tweed, but it also has all of those technological aspects you'd expect from modern garments. So waterproof, breathable membranes, uh, insulation, stretch panels, all of the features and functionality you need to look good in the field, but also to perform well. You don't want to be restricted by your clothing and certainly you don't want to be uncomfortable and affected by the elements. Uh, so certainly a good, modern, um, technological uh, tweed jacket and suit uh, is a must. When it comes to my feet, there's two stages of the day. Uh, first off, I'll arrive in a pair of brogues. I just like them and I think they offset the tweed very nicely. Uh, but as soon as I go out into the field, I always wear uh, welly boots. Now, uh, my go-to welly boots are Le Chameau. I use these for a couple of years now, but I have had pairs that have lasted me five, six, seven years before in the past. Uh, some people prefer to shoot in um, lace-up uh, long boots with gaiters, which is fine, you know, if that's what they want to do. Uh, but for me, this is the most flexible and comfortable uh, option, and it also deals with all terrain uh, and all weather conditions. So there's clothing and footwear. Now, from time to time, it does rain in the UK. And even though these tweed suits are waterproof and breathable, sometimes it gets a little bit heavy and tweed on the outside will pick up water. So I also use or take with me a lightweight, breathable, um, waterproof over jacket. Uh, this is the Deer Hunter Track, uh, which I think is the best waterproof they make in their collection. This is one of the jackets I used over in Alaska where layering underneath for warmth was important, but the waterproof layer on the outside was absolutely critical. Um, so if it does get really heavy rain, I'll pop this over the top of my tweed jacket, continue shooting through the day, and then that can be taken off and left in the car, and you can go in for, for dinner uh, with your tweed suit on still. So pretty important. Then we come to other odds and sods of accessories. Now at the front here, uh, you'll see a magnet and a little bag. Uh, there will be some shoots you go to, where you can leave your cartridges on the peg. Uh, the shoot host will say to you, leave them there and we'll collect them afterwards. Now that could be part of their game management plan. They like to see how many shots have been taken on each drive on each peg, so they can work out where the birds are flushing and who's getting the most shooting. Uh, that's helpful for them so that they can make those changes to how the birds are driven or where they peg the guns in the future. Um, but typically, you'll be asked to collect your cartridges when you leave your peg. Now there's two ways of doing that, either using this, which you can use the magnet to pick them up without having to bend down and put them into that nice little bag, particularly if they're muddy. Or you can bend down, grab them out of the mud and stick them in your coat pocket. I know which one I prefer. Very, very simple, doesn't take much space uh, and very useful. Behind that, you'll see the absolute essentials, Peltor electronic ear defenders. Now, for many, many years, I shot without any ear defenders. Why? I have no idea. It's probably one of the most insane things I've ever done. I now have tinnitus in my left ear. I can still hear pretty well out of my right. Um, but it was unnecessary. Um, I started using a foam earplug a couple of years ago, which kind of worked, but then you drop it on the floor and it's uncomfortable and it gets muddy. Uh, and then these things came along and I thought, well, let's give them a go. And they're fantastic. Not only do they cut out the sound of the loud bangs, but you can also have a conversation with your mates two pegs down and you can hear uh, if they're criticizing your shooting. So one of the other benefits of using them is you can hear birds flushing from way in front of you, which means that I can get myself ready. Even though I can't see the bird, I know they're coming. Uh, so very, very useful things, and there's nothing more important uh, than protecting your hearing uh, and keeping yourself safe. Um, grip swirl gloves. Uh, because I shoot side by side, uh, typically I'm gripping the barrel with my left hand, and it can get pretty warm. Uh, so using a pair of gloves not only uh, allows me to protect my left hand, uh, but it also gives my right hand better purchase on the guns. I've got straight stocks. Grip is very important, consistency of grip. Uh, on that stock, otherwise it can slide around and of course then it can affect your mount. Um, so I've got used to wearing gloves for the past couple of years now. I even use them during the summer when I'm clay shooting. Uh, so they're absolutely, I don't think I could shoot anymore without the gloves, so you know, pretty essential. These are specially made for shooting. Left hand has a heat proof layer, uh, the right hand has a swell in the palm. So you know, very good gloves, but once again, definitely down to personal choice. Just in front of that, you'll see a Zippo hand warmer. As we get older, um, certainly my extremities start to get colder, particularly when you stood 
in the middle of a field at minus five and you're waiting for the birds to come. can be 15, 20 minutes before the beaters come round and the birds start, finally start to break. And it doesn't hurt to be able to pop your hand in your pocket, grab hold of a hand warmer uh, and keep your fingers warm. But it's not essential, um, but it's just a luxury that I enjoy. The most important part for the keeper is the tip. If you are going to go shooting, whether you're invited or you bought a day as a guest, uh, a tip is an essential part of the day. It's such an important part of your recognition for the quality of the birds that the keepers put over you. And also it's an important part of their income. Uh, so make sure that you're taking 20 pounds per 100 plus 10 pounds. So if it's 200 bird day, 50 pounds. If it's a 300 bird day, 70 pounds uh, there on thereafter. Of course, you may also have had a loader, uh, whether that's somebody stuffing for you or somebody um, loading for you double gunning. Uh, that typically is around £80 a day at the moment, although I tend to give the guy uh, 100 quid, um, depending on how well they've performed, how much company they've been. Certainly not about my shooting, because it tends to be pretty ordinary when I'm double gunning, but, um, but there you go. And I take this little leather bag that puts all these accessories in. And the final piece of the puzzle is this. Now, shooting isn't just about shooting. It's about spending time in the field with like-minded people. It's about enjoying other people's stories, building new friends and new relationships, uh, and all coming together to celebrate uh, the day. Um, I always take a basket with me, uh, 12 glasses, a couple of bottles of champagne, a couple of bottles of slow gin. In fact, I think this is Damson Gin from Fox Denton. Of course, we've got to be very careful and responsible in the way that we approach alcohol when we're shooting. A uh, glass of wine at lunch is fine, and then perhaps leave uh, any other drinking until after you finish the shoot. Um, safety is of absolute paramount importance. Enjoying a drink with your friends is one thing, um, but when it gets to the point where it affects your ability to be able to shoot safely, then of course that's completely unacceptable. But also, you've got to fully enjoy the day. So it's all about pitching the hospitality with the type of guns you've got and with the type of shooting uh, that you're enjoying. Uh, but I've always found that a, a quick livener early on during the day helps my swing uh, and certainly helps to build that social atmosphere around the shoot. So hospitality, take advantage of it, but be safe and be responsible. And there you have it. It's pretty much everything I use. Now, of course, it looks a lot, but once you've put the clothes on, you've packed everything into its various different bags, uh, there isn't actually that much equipment here. I've been on shoots before where I've seen the backs of Land Rovers filled to the brim with coats and dogs and all manner of things, and you know, it really doesn't need to be that complicated. Uh, of course, everybody will find their own system, everybody will find the equipment that works for them, uh, and a system and solution of storing it in the back of their truck. Uh, but that's what I use. So I'd love to hear what you guys use out in the field. You never know, there might be a few pointers that I can pick up and a few changes that I can make to my equipment. But in the meantime, enjoy your shooting, be safe, and hot barrels.